So we're just going to do a little video um, on preparing a, a roebuck head. Obviously, if you've gone out and shot one, you want to put it on the wall. Uh, you want to get it to a nice clean state um, so it doesn't smell or anything in the house. Um, you may remember that in May we shot this uh, really old roebuck um, and then I popped that in the freezer and got it out a few days ago and it's just been soaking in water for 24 hours. And what that does is it just draws some of the blood out of the skull. So it just means when we, um, after we've cleaned it up and we've bleached it, it should be whiter than if it was one that had been sort of left to go a bit mouldy um, or the sort of blood's really stained the bone. Um, so obviously we need a knife for taking the skin off the head. Um, obviously disposable gloves to make it a slightly more hygienic job. Um, got a, just a normal multi-purpose saw. Uh, I've got a couple of a head, other heads that we'll cut to show you how to do that. A chain mail glove for when we're using the knife or when we're sawing more importantly so we don't uh, run the saw across our fingers. Um, I've got a couple of containers. I've got some wire so that when we put the head into the water we can keep the antlers up out of the water. Some soda crystals which will go in the water to help us um, break the fat down and, and just get the process going a bit quicker. Uh, and then obviously at the end we've got some hydrogen peroxide um, which will pour over the skull to get it nice and white once it's all dried off. So first things first, we've got the uh, old fashioned plug-in Burko boiler. You can use a gas ring with like a cooking pot over it, or if you're really brave and you want to do it in the house when your wife's out or your partner, um, you can just do it on the, on the hob at home, but obviously it does have a certain smell to it. So um, probably best to do it when your other half isn't around. So we're going to put in some soda crystals, which are like old fashioned cleaning product basically. Um, so we've got about a bucket of water in here and probably going to put in roughly 330 grams of this and that will just help break the fat down. Um, the only thing you've got to be a little bit careful of is once you put the soda crystals in it is very good at breaking fat down so if you leave it in the water to boil too long it can actually um, break the fat down in between the bones and then you find that the skull starts to fall apart so if you put these in just don't boil it for too long. I put in obviously my pre-measured amount. Pop that on to get it boiling and hopefully chuck a head in there in a minute. Okay so obviously when you're just boiling a head up to have it as a skull mount it doesn't really matter how you skin the head off. Um, if you wanted to get it stuffed by a taxidermist so like a shoulder mount I would recommend really sort of cutting the whole lot off behind the shoulder and just putting the freezer whole and then taking it to the taxidermist like that because they'd much rather skin it out themselves in case you make a mess of skinning it. Um, it's more stitching for them. But obviously taking the skin off for just a skull, take it off any way you like. I tend to go just split the jaw open on either side and then just grab hold of its right hand side because I'm right handed and just um, work along the skin taking it off as we go. We get around the back of the skull just come in as close to the antlers as possible and then try and get the tip of the knife up underneath the coronet. The bucks in East Anglia they've got really um, close pedicles so it's very difficult to get the um, the skin off in between the antlers so with our ones I tend to just cut it off across the front and then we'll be able to get that out in a minute after it's been boiled and, and pressure washed. Okay so there's the skin obviously we've taken the skin as close around the uh, coronet as we can we just got that little bit in the middle which will come out later. So you've got your fully skinned head and now we need to take the bottom jaw off so how you do that is you put the tip of the knife in on the inside of the jaw or inside of the jaw bone as far as it will go down and in and pull it back as far as it will go on both sides and then you're going to cut the cheek muscles on the outside of the jaw as well. Again go in as far as you can and come back as far as you can. Younger bucks are easier than older bucks, but once you've done that, if you just lever the jaw 
back on itself. Pull that out and then just cut the tongue off as close to the skull as you can. There's two little bones which hold the tongue into the skull so you just have to crack them with the knife. So there you go. So you've got the, the jaw removed. Um, what we'll do is we'll boil this up and we'll have a look at the teeth because they're really worn down because this was an ancient old buck. And then that's ready to go in the boiler like that. We're going to keep this one full skull. Um, if you've got something that you want to have CIC measured, then definitely keep it full skull because you'll win a little bit on the weight, the way the formula is. Um, I've got a couple which I've already skinned, which I'm going to show you how to cut them in a minute for a short nose cut and a long nose cut. So we've got a young roebuck here, which obviously I've skinned it already. Um, and we're going to do this as a short nose cut. So it's basically the, um, the cut's going to go from the nose through the eye socket to the back of the skull. If you feel with your thumb at the front here, you can feel where the, the nasal bones finish. And then all this at the front is just um, cartilage. So what we can then do is just put a knife in where the, the hard bone finishes, just cut across in a line, and then go down and scoop that cartilage out at the front. And then when we stick that up in a minute, that will give us something solid to put the saw against to then cut down through. And then we've got another roebuck here, which we're going to and try and do as a long nose cut. Um, I find they're actually easier to do a long nose cut once they're cleaned up because you can see what you're doing a little bit more but if you want to do it fresh um, the cut's going to go from these the front of the front teeth so again just try and scoop a little bit of that out of the front to give you a, a sort of clean area to work from with the saw and then we'll take that outside and show you the um, the sawing process. So we've got a chain mail glove on because um, you've got to be careful when you're sawing these heads that you don't slip off the head and run across your fingers. So we'll take these two outside and we'll show you how to cut these. So first things first we've got the young buck here which we're going to do as a short nose cut. So remember that's from the, the front of the bone, the nose bone, through the eye socket to the back of the skull. I like to prop them up against something. You can prop them up against the wall or a tree. Obviously, we've got this post here outside the larder. And if you can look straight down onto the head, then as you're going through it, you should be able to work out if you're um, going square through the head or at a bit of an angle. So look down over the top of it, place the saw where you're going to start and just come back a couple of times to get a little groove going. And then using the sort of distance or the angle where the blade is over the eyes, you can actually see if you're fairly square on it or not. Just give it another little check. And then there's a point where you're at the point of no return and you just got to go for it. Just let the saw do the work and just go down through it slowly. Okay, so there you have it, the cut half and the uncut half. So that's our short nose cut done. Then the long nose cut, same thing again. It obviously depends how level the antlers are as to how it sits against stuff, but you're gonna go starting on the top of the front teeth here, underneath the eyes to the back of the skull. There we go, so that's the long nose cut. 
take them back inside and we'll pop them in the boiler. So I'm just gonna wrap a bit of um, thick garden wire around the antlers here. So when I put it in the water, we can just keep the, um, the antlers out of the, the boiling water because you don't want to drop them in there because it will start to take some of the color off them. So it's very technical. Just go around, twist it a few times, and then we'll hang that in the water, loop that over the top of the boiler. All right, we'll just pop these in loosely and then we'll reposition them in a minute. So obviously the younger animal is going to take a lot less time than the older ones. So the young one, we're going to pop it in and probably leave it for 10 minutes, then have a look at it. The mature one's probably going to be half an hour or so. And then the, the old one we've got here might even be sort of 35, 40 minutes. So they're just sat in there like that. And then we'll turn the burko up get it on a sort of a good simmer rather than a really hard boil because you want it to sort of slowly break down the fat rather than just annihilate it straight away. So if you see in there, we've got the, the bulk of the skull in there. We've just left the coronets up out of the water. There might be a little bit of meat at the back of the skull that's exposed. And obviously there's some skin in between the pedicles that's uh, not in the water. But what we'll do is we'll drop that down for like the last five minutes and then that will get it soft enough so that we can clean it off with a pressure washer. Ooh, time to go and have a look. Okay, so we're just looking at that little young one. And yeah, that's definitely um, ready to come out. It's only been in there 10 minutes. You see where the meat on the side of the skull started lifting up? So we just want to keep that wet because for the whole process now, once this comes out of the boiler, it needs to go into cold water, let it cool down, and then we need to keep it wet up until the point where we're going to put the peroxide on it. Otherwise, if the bone dries out, which it will do really quickly when we take it out of the boiling water, it won't take the bleach properly. So we go straight out into the cold water, let that stay there, and then we'll just have a little look at these other ones. That one needs another 10 minutes, I think. And the older one will obviously be a fair way off. So we've got the little head here. Um, we've just got to be a little bit careful that we don't blow the nose bones off. So before you clean it off, if you give them a little wobble, if they feel like they're gonna come off, then you may as well pull them off now and then you can glue them on later on after it's been bleached. Um, they should be okay. And then when you're using the pressure washer, you want to have it on a rubber mat because the head will vibrate against the concrete. And if you don't have a rubber mat on there, then you'll rub the antlers and the skull. And also when you're pressure washing, you need to be careful not to put the jet of the pressure washer on the antlers because it will take the color off the antlers as well. Okay, so there we have the little one done. Um, obviously the short nose cut makes it pretty easy to get every single bit of meat off this. Um, so that's very clean now. We could just let that dry out and that would just be a sort of nice natural skull color. But what we're gonna do is put it back in the water to keep the bone wet. And then we're gonna bleach it with peroxide like the others when they're done as well. Yeah, this middle-aged one looks ready now, so we'll Take that out straight into the cold water. And then we'll just, this really old one, it's getting there. We'll just drop it down into the water a little bit further just to try and get that meat off around the back of the skull and in between the pedicles. So again, around the back of the skull, you can see that this meat at the back here is lifted away from the bone 
and it's sort of quite jelly-like now, so that should be good to go. So there we go, that's the, the middle size one cleaned up. Pop that in some water. So this really old one has been in here, well, just under 40 minutes actually. Um, so it looks pretty much done now. Give it a few minutes in the cold water and then we can clean that one off and we're all done. There we go. So again, that's got that one cleaned up pretty good. We'll get this back in some water and then we'll have a look at them before we put the peroxide on. So we've got those three heads cleaned up now um, and also cleaned up um, a jaw from each one as well so we can have a look at the, the different wear on the teeth. Um, so obviously this is the youngest one. Um, this is a jaw to go with it. So it's a two year old and this is its second set of antlers. Um, so it's got all its adult teeth um, and so usually with these teeth when they're juveniles the third tooth in will have three bumps on it when they've got their adult teeth it'll have just two bumps on it and roe deer they actually mature their teeth a little bit earlier than the other species we've got the one in the middle here that we did as a long nose cut just come a little bit oh, too much of an angle there you'd usually leave a little bit of eye um, of this bone on the eye socket there um, that's a sort of, you know, middle-aged buck, so let's say sort of four or five maybe. Uh, and then we've got the really old one, which we uh, shot in May. There's a, a link to the video in the description if you guys want to look it up. Um, obviously, we've done this as a full skull. With the pressure washer, we can get in between all the little bits around the back here. If you don't have a pressure washer, and you're not worried about how the skull looks, I'd recommend you cut them and do them as a short nose because you can scrape most of the meat off with a knife um, because obviously there's, no, there's not many little bobbly bits around the back. The long nose and the full skull, you really want a pressure washer to do a decent job of it. If you still don't have a pressure washer and you can't get the little bits of meat out around the ear canal, what you can do is get a, a thin screwdriver, push it into the ear canal, and then you can actually snap out these bits here and then you can clean out all the meat around there. With the pressure washer, we've actually blasted most of the brain out, but sometimes there's a little bit of membrane left in there. So if you just get yourself a pair of forceps, get in there, grab hold of it, twist it around a bit to loosen it off, and then you'll be able to pull it out. Um, obviously that one, when we shot it, we knew it wasn't definitely a calessed head, um, but you can see the pedicles are quite far apart, but the antlers have just grown together um, but they are slightly separate all the way up, so it's just an interesting old head rather than a truly calessed head where the pedicles tend to grow together and then you get one piece of antler as a result. The white bits around the back, they're just where the velvet was and where the deer hadn't coloured its antlers up very much yet. So you've got the three different jaws there. You've got the youngest one, what we're calling the mature one. And then the very old one, which you can see its teeth are really worn down and the uh, fourth tooth along has actually pretty much collapsed to nothing. So we've got um, liquid hydrogen peroxide here. Um, it's 12% this, so it's fairly strong stuff. Um, this is actually from a hairdresser suppliers, but you can also get it from uh, your vets or you can go into the high street chemist and buy it in tiny little 25 um, 
milliliter bottles. The stuff from the chemist is quite weak. Um, and in the old days, we would wrap the head up in cotton wool or a plain uh, kitchen roll with no coloring on it. And then obviously avoiding um, touching the antlers because you don't want to bleach any color off of there by having it in contact for a long time. And then we'd soak the towel in the hydrogen peroxide, leave it overnight and then take it off and that would be bleached. And I'd recommend doing that if you're using um, high street hydrogen peroxide. But if you've got fairly strong stuff like this, um, I found that you can just pour it into a container, get your head, just hold it over a bucket obviously, and just pour it over all the bone. Obviously try not to pour it up over the antlers as much as possible, but as long as you don't um, leave it in contact with the antlers for a long time, it, it won't bleach any of the color off. So that's that, that's fine. And then we'll just literally let that dry on the bone. Once it's dry, that'll be nice and white. So same with this one. Obviously, as they get a bit older, there's a bit more sort of knobbly bits to go around. So just make sure you get everywhere. And the reason we're peroxiding them is even though we've got the skulls fairly clean and we could leave them to just dry and they'd be a sort of, you know, clean bone colour, there will always be little bits of meat or gristle that you can never get out. So pouring the peroxide over it and put it into contact with any soft tissue will bleach that so that when you look at the skull, even if there are little bits around the back, you won't notice them. When you've got a full skull, I usually pour it in the brain cavity first as much as possible until it sort of starts to overflow and then just let that drain through the skull while you go around the back pour it around and then obviously because this is a full skull and it's a bit bigger I'll probably do that a second time you definitely want to be wearing gloves for this bit especially if you've got little cuts or nicks in your skin you'll soon feel if uh, you touch it with hydrogen peroxide. There we go. And then we'll just literally stick those jaws in the peroxide for 20, 30 seconds, swill them around a bit, and then they'll come up nice and white as well. But we shouldn't lose any of the color that's on the teeth. So there you go, that's the whole process. We're gonna leave those to dry out. Um, and once they're dry, we'll have a look at them again, um, to show you sort of what they look like and uh, that's the process done. So have a go at home. It's not that difficult, but it is a bit messy. And like I say, your partner won't thank you if you try and do it inside the house. So a couple of days later, just been out stalking this morning, shot a, a red spiker, which you guys will see uh, soon, hopefully. Um, we've got the finished heads. These have been in the chiller for a couple of days just to dry out a little bit um, and just keep the flies off them as well. Um, so, I've just left the peroxide on there and it's just literally dried on the bone. Um, so obviously don't touch it while it's wet, but once it's fully dry, you're okay to handle them. And then you can just see the difference with these three jaws. Um, these ones we uh, bleached on the side we looked at in the video uh, and this side we didn't bleach. So there's not a huge amount of difference, um, but a little bit whiter after it's been um, washed in peroxide and just gives them a nicer finish really. So sort of general maximum age for row typically would be sort of eight, nine, ten years old. So we're going to put this at obviously in the old category, um, yeah, about nine years old perhaps. <laughs>